Hello, this is Mark Viquez, regional correspondent for the website Stadium Journey, the industry's leader in sports travel and reviews. Check out our new and improved website. It now has a map to keep track of all your visits and perhaps a few places you need to see that are not too far. All that at stadiumjourney.com. My guest today is Eric Franson. He is the GM slash owner of the Pinesville Porcupines of the Old North State League in North Carolina. Eric, welcome to the show. Hey, glad to be here. I appreciate you having me on. Nice. Now, you guys just introduced your logo a little while ago. Uh, It got attention on uh, Chris Kramer's sports logo page. And uh, one thing I didn't know is that uh, you guys were the Mecklenburg Muscadines last year. What? Why make the change? And tell us a little bit about this creation of the new logo. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the, the team actually, um, is four years old and it was in Moxville, North Carolina, okay. which is, uh, f- further East, uh, towards the coast. And, uh, last year, and I wasn't involved, uh, during that, or, uh, even last year for the most part, the, uh, team moved to Pineville last year. Okay. And uh, Charlotte is is surrounded by the county of Mecklenburg County, and Pineville is right on the outskirts of Charlotte. And so I, th- I think the league looked at, we can go Mecklenburg and keep the Muscadines as the logo. It sounds good together, and and, and that's how they, they handled it, and which was fine. Um, and I volunteered a bit last year, so I knew about the team. I was there when I could. I helped out. Um, and after the season, I approached the, actually the league and said, Hey, if you're going to stick around here in Pineville, you need to change the, the team to a Pineville name. Um, Mecklenburg isn't going to resonate here. We're, a, we're a town of 10,000. And if you name it Pineville, people are going to come. We don't have a high school. We don't have another, uh, call it adult team with Pineville across the chest. And I really felt that if they made that uh, brand switch, it would it would really uh, solidify the team and would bring people in and in, in you know throughout Pineville to support support now the Porcupines. Nice, nice, yeah. Uh, so just something simple by calling it Pineville, and of course coming up with a nice logo, uh, you definitely hit the mark on that. But uh, tell us how you came up with the Porcupines, which yeah, so makes sense. Uh, makes sense. It, it makes sense because of the P other than yes. that porcupines don't, they don't exist in the state of North Carolina, mm-hmm. which I actually didn't know that. Um, so our, uh, our baseball team are, is really the only porcupines in the state, which is, uh, which is interesting. But what we did is we, um, we brought it to the, to the town of Pineville. We, we allowed people to, first of all, um, make some nominations as far as what are the different different names that it could be. And we received, and I, again, I wasn't involved right now. So this part is what I've been told, but I think they received 20 plus different, different name combinations. Um, They put it up to a vote and then the community came on social media and, and voted and, and the porcupines won out. They won out. Did they win by a large margin or was it close? Um, I, I was told they actually won by a large margin. So once, once those five are there, that's, that's what they went with. Porcupines okay. was the winner. All right. What were some of the other names? I'm not sure if I'm familiar with the, the, the fan vote. I might've See, got now, some... now you're asking me tough questions. Tough here, questions. <laughs> I can, uh, I, I can, I can find this. Um, okay. I can find this. And one of the interesting ones and, and one of the ones that kind of was at, at the beginning that it could be a, a, a good option was the um, we had a president here, Polk. So, oh, yeah. you know, the, the Polks, the presidents, that was something that I know a lot of people have talked about because that made us unique. Uh, James, so that would have been J- J- prob- James K. Polk, right? 1845 yeah. to 1849. Yeah, exactly. So served one term because he said he was going to serve one term. Left office, of course, he he died soon after. So maybe maybe he knew he had to leave. <laughs> Little so so actually, um, there were six finalists, and it was the mules, the pine cones, okay, the mules. presidents, the ponderosas, the um, I don't even know how to say this. The oh, goodness, pe- well, pegus, and then of course good. 
the porcupines. Yeah, if if you can't say the name, then it's not going to win. Throw it out. What what on earth? <laughs> the <laughs> the peg use. That's is that some kind of local kind of horse? Some kind of okay, horse. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I I would say the porcupines is probably the best name there. Um, so and with that, you know, the league the league works with um, a graphic design company, and I don't know their name actually, but basically. The league comes up with the the name, uh, kind of a concept, and they turn it over, and this company just knocks knocks it out yeah. the park every time. Because our our logos, our branding throughout the league is is really great. They've done a done a real nice job. Yeah, I talked. Yeah, I did talk to uh, Alec Allred last year about the logos, and he came on the podcast, and I was like, "Wow, this is what attracted me to the league was the logo. Some of them were just superb. Some of the uniforms were just." very high i mean just very eye-catching you know the yes. bogeys uh uniform has that uh argyle oh yeah uh, look on it and then uh i the serpent turf not that i was a big fan of that logo but it was a good looking logo in color yeah and i i like the sweepers logo i think the original version so th- there was a lot out there and then of course you guys uh the porcupines just uh jump right in there Yep. Along with the the skippers, they're new this year. So I, I like the skippers qu- logo quite a bit. I think they've done a real nice job with the branding. Well, well, yeah, well, they just it looks professional. It looks good. Somebody is looking at these uh, jer- logos and saying, "Oh, I want to buy a hat or I want to buy a shirt with it." You know, I see some other leagues with their logos, and it's like, man, this is like you, if you're going to have some kind of baseball team, whether it's amateur, professional, at this level, that level. You gotta have a good mark. So yeah, yeah. I think uh I think Pine Bill hit hits that there with the colors, a little bit of blue in the baseball bat. Yeah. And, that's right. Uh, offsets the orange and brown colors. So it's mm-hmm. it's a nice little combination it, there that's not it's, used. Well, it's a very unique color combination and and actually it is um it's it's more of a maroon than a a, a brown. Oh, okay. Um, which go. turns out where that's uh that was my high school color, my college color. So it's uh, apparently followed me to the uh, to the Carolinas, which yeah, is yeah. kind no, of fun. No, maroon and uh, sky blue or, or Carolina blue is is a perfect combination. It so, is. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's quite nice. I don't think too many teams use that out there right now. Off no, the top of my no, head, but yeah. that's one of the things that was requested. Is it's like, hey, we're gonna let's put this together, but let's put something together that's unique that nobody mm-hmm. else has. Um, and I think we hit that. You know, we yeah. really hit the mark with that. So how how has attention been now? Are you getting phone calls for merchandise, tickets? How's it been since you introduced the uh, the logo? Yeah. So first of all, um, I I came on board. We signed papers about ten days ago. So it is you know it is brand new. We're probably even a little bit behind everybody because I came on board so so late. That being said, you know we made the launch. And, and that day I got, I actually had a call from Arizona, somebody that wanted to buy a hat. Nice. So we're, um, we have um, an order in, um, we're expecting to have merch in about three weeks and we're, we, we're not allowing people to pre-order quite yet, but it's, uh, it's going to be probably within the next seven days, we're going to open up some of the items for pre-order and then uh, start really, uh, you know, pushing that and allowing people to start, uh, you know, wearing our merch and apparel and, and branding throughout, you know, really, I say it throughout our town, but, you know, it's going to be throughout the country because, yeah. you know, we have a, we have something that's caught, caught a lot of people's eye. No, no, definitely. It's, uh, and that's always the good mark where you could be in Arizona or Indiana where I am and somebody's wearing uh, your official logo or hat. So, yeah. Yeah. In fact, we, uh, so um, I'm from a small town of Minnesota, uh, Two Harbors. It's a little bit north of Duluth. It's on Lake Superior. And, oh, yeah. and it, once we launched actually a, a retail store there and they, they knew me, but they, they reached out and said, Hey, can we, uh, can we, we love it. Can we carry your apparel in our, in really? our retail store? So, yeah. So we're going to have some apparel there. Um, and then in, and then in actually Pineville, um, you know, we don't have a physical location, but we're partnering with, uh, the ice cream shop, Carolina Scoops, and we're going to have all our apparel and merch um, at their location. They have a big, big shop, and they got some room for us. And we're going to just partner up and you know work together. That I mean that that's a kind of a smart little thing to do. Have a connection with the ice cream 
Can you beat uh, ice cream and baseball uh, and kids? Yeah. I mean, it's it's perfect. Will they be serving ice cream at the ballpark? We're working on that. You know, the ballpark has has contracts in place. Um, so actually, I met with the city of Pineville today, and I, I stated, you know, we're, we want to be creative and and see how we can uh, be fan friendly and and business friendly, and and uh, so we're working working on a few things. But at, at the minimum, I think we're gonna have uh, be able to have some sort of porcupine ice cream or porcupine shake. We're going to do something fun with Carolina scoops. Oh yeah. No, that that's, that's where the fun is. Ice cream at the ballpark. You can't beat that. That's right. Uh, thinking about the ballpark. Uh, I know I had uh, you know, some of the gentlemen I've had from the league. Some of these ballparks are old Milltown ballparks, high school venues. What's uh, what's yours going to be like? Yeah. So we have a beautiful ballpark. It's um it doesn't doesn't seat uh you know like a thousand or fifteen hundred, but what it is, it's a it's a a college quality park. It has uh great grandstand seating. Um we have folding chairs for our, you know, probably our top hundred seats. Uh we have a beautiful press box. And then along the sides, um, we're a little bit on a hill so people can bring lawn chairs and chairs and once they're in there, they can choose to sit behind the plate or uh, kind of stretch out in the lawn. So it's it's really a, a gorgeous venue and uh, probably one of the best venues in, in in the league. Okay, and what's the name of the ballpark? Yeah, it's Jack Hughes Park. Jack Hughes. Okay, that, I'm looking at it right now. Okay, that's yeah. what I figure. Yeah, that is a nice looking ballpark. It uh, is. Who who normally plays there? Is you said it was a college venue. Well, it's it's you could compare it to a college venue. So it's yeah. it's used by the. Um, uh, one of the, one of the local high schools uses it as their oh. home home field, um, Charlotte Catholic, and then it's used for you know tournaments throughout the year. So actually, for us to, you know, we have twenty home dates, and we wanted to add a few more, and we couldn't because we're just locked out because that field is used you know every single day throughout yeah. the throughout the summer. But yeah. we're, we're thrilled, and you know we have a we have a five year contract with the city. Um, and you know, our goal is this year, um, you know, we want to average 500 fans a, a game and show the city we're for real. And, um, at that point, I think we're going to have a little more, a little more, uh, power on our side of the table to, you know, maybe start looking at how can we expand from a, from a bleacher standpoint down the line. So we're, we're excited to be here in Pineville and I expect to be here for a long time. No, definitely. And you said the ball, the team had played here, re, had played here the whole time. They just went by the county. Uh, just last year. Just, just last, last year. year. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anything, anything you're looking to do differently uh, for in-game entertainment, uh, food choices? You know what? We're going to, we're going to expand on last year. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to say we're going to do everything differently, but it's a, it's a new year. It's a new call it management. And um, you know, we have, We've had this four or five months to prepare for the season. So as far as uh, think about game entertainment or on on site entertainment, we're gonna we're gonna have about twelve interns, and you know for game ops. And so we expect to do a lot of fun things with the fans between between innings. You know, everyone talks about the Savannah bananas. You know, we're not going to be that. You know, there's only one Savannah banana. Yeah, no, I agree with but, you. <laughs> but but you know, we do want to make it entertaining, and we want to bring some components of that to the to the ballpark because the fans have, have shown they love it and they love, they want to be entertained. So we're going to, we're going to try to find, you know, kind of our spot where we fit in with that. And, um, and we're going to have the staff to do it last year. The team didn't, they just had a couple people on, on staff and a couple of interns where this year, you know, we're going to have, you know, a full coaching staff management interns. So we, uh, we really expect to give the, the town and the surrounding towns um, really a, a great option for family entertainment. Yeah, no, you're right. If you just have the right prices, good food, you know, maybe some nights where you, you do some specials on food or drink. Yeah, you're right. You, you'd be surprised how many people appreciate that because I assume a lot of folks maybe not want to travel to Charlotte all the time to see a game. They'd rather just stay local and yeah. So, well, and that's a great, glad you brought that up. So we have the Charlotte Knights, uh, which is the Chicago White Sox AAA club, beautiful stadium in uptown Charlotte. Um, but you know, you go to uptown Charlotte, it's, it's a whole evening. You got to get there. You know, it's a, it's a AAA game. It's, 
uh, a lot's going on. Things are a little more expensive. They are. And uh, if, if you, if you want to stay close by, you know, our, you can have a dinner for probably $6 with burgers and brats and fries and nachos and everything you get at a, at the ball game in, in uptown. And, you know, we have a beer garden, so you can come out and you're going to get a, you know, say a $6 beer instead of paying 13, you know, at, at the, at the other venue. So we, uh, we really want to give that option for people to enjoy the experience, but also be quite a bit lighter on the, on the pocketbook. Yeah, you're, you're right. I was in Detroit last summer and I was at a summer collegiate game in Royal Oak. And I mean, they had $3 white claw specials. Beer were six hot dogs were three Yep, tickets were seven free parking. And, and there was a guy there saying, you know, I'd rather I come out here more than a Tigers game just because it's closer. It's cheaper. And I have just as much fun watching baseball. Yep than I would downtown, you know, so. And the uh, seats, you're right there. You're on top of yeah, it. Top. And I, and I tell you what, it's, it's summer ball. You know, these guys are all college players and they just finished a, you know, a four month grind or a five month grind. But I tell you what, they're intense. And, and you, these, you can just tell these guys are here to get better, but they're also here to win. Um, and as uh, it's, so there's intensity in the games. And, and, and when you, when you could be right there on the field, it makes a big difference just to be able yeah. to see it and feel it. Yeah, and, and you have a great ballpark. That's another key. You know, you want to have a, 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 a nice venue there where people will come back and tell their friends, hey, yep. you got to check out the porcupines. You know, it's – That's right. It's uh, – it, it, my kids loved it. You know, you have a lot of moms who bring their kids to the game or fathers too, and they let their kids mm -hmm. run around and and they just hang out there. Uh, you say it's family-orientated. Uh, uh, what are some of the activities that kids can expect uh, or parents who are bringing their kids? Yeah. So there is a, a, a first class um, actually playground right within a hundred feet of the ballpark. And I, when I say first class, it is first class. Um, we also have walking and biking trails right from the park that go off into the woods and do like a 0.7 mile uh, loop trail. Um, you know, we're talking um, with the company about bringing a bounce house in. You know, so these are just some of the things we're going to do. Uh, we always have some that throw out the first pitch, national anthem. And so we're doing all those things. Run the bases, right? Game's over. Get the kids out there to run the bases. You know, that's on the agenda. So, um, you know, we're we're still working on that aspect of, of the program. But we know that if you know, we need to and we want to make it so that the kids want to be there. Because if the kids want to be there, the parents are going to bring them. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's uh, I go to a lot of ballparks I've all over the country. And, you know, when you see the kids just, I mean, a kid could, a certain kid, five, six years old, could just be happy rolling down a hill That's right. <laughs> back and <laughs> forth. So, you know, if you have bounce houses, if you have face painting, if you have a mat, I assume you're going to have a mascot walking around. No, we're, uh, we're right now working on the mascot. And uh, we're going to find the right person. It's part of our intern internship program. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll be probably a few weeks, but we're going to have a, a contest about naming the mascot. So we've already uh, put it out there. We got a, we got a ton of great names and we're going to bring that to the city and uh, the town of Pineville and really let them vote and, and choose the, choose the mascot's name. Yeah. And okay. That, I mean, that, those are fun things. Name the mascot, name the team. You know, uh, pretty soon you'll have design the GM. Or, what's that? Fire the general manager. You know, Fire the general manager. Got all these they, options. They, that that being it, you know, should the general manager go? Is he providing enough fun for you guys? That's right. Or, or every dunk, game. How about you just get a dunk tank and you can just there you, you can go. Just get See, the night. I think you need to come down here and help out. I I like that one. Oh, I, good, I would love to. That that is. I'm a teacher by trade. That's my profession and. We we have the we have the Indianapolis Indians here, Triple A, but we do not have one of these summer collegiate teams in the Prospect League or Great Lakes League or Northwoods League anywhere near us, and it just kills me because I would love to have some kind of connection with so, with us, you know. Yeah, so I'm a I'm a Minnesota guy originally. So the Northwoods League is is we have the Duluth Huskies. The Huskies, um, we have Wade Stadium. At Wade Stadium, that's where I played high school ball, but in some college ball, my summer ball, that was our actually our home home stadium was the Wade Stadium. Um, but uh, an interesting story. I had a coach um, 
all lined up. His name is Will Peterson. He was coaching the Huskies last year. Um, he's from uh, my hometown. He was a volunteer pitching coach, but just a, a brilliant young man that's that's really has developed into a, a great coach. So I, I called Will about three weeks ago and said, Hey, Will, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to get the team. I'm going to run it. I want you to, we can do it. Get you down here and coach. And he, and he kind of chuckled and said, I would love to Eric, but I just got hired by the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> Double A as assistant pitching coach. And he's, he's a math guy. So I think there's some analytics there. Uh, Two weeks later, the uh, AA pitching coach got promoted to AAA, and he said, Will, you're coming with me. So here's this 25-year-old, now is a AAA, you know, assistant pitching analytics guy in, in their system. I mean, you can't beat that for the Memphis Red, I think it's the Redbirds. Yeah, Memphis Redbirds. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, that, that's a good excuse not to come down and work for you. That's fair, but the best part is he, they play the night 16 times in Charlotte. Okay. So. We're gonna we're gonna get him here quite a bit. So we'll bring him in, talk to the guys, and uh, I mean, just to, for the guys to hear that story, this twenty five year old that he actually didn't play college ball. The coach said, "Hey, Will, we like you, but wow. we don't think you're gonna get much time." So Will became a, a manager for a year or two and transitioned into a coach, and uh, now he's coaching triple A ball. So I think it's wow. gonna be a good story for our guys. So, so there was hope for me. I, I could have been in the minor leagues coaching somewhere. <laughs> never give up, right? Never give up. I, I did coach. I coached middle school baseball for about 10 years. And I mean, obviously that's nothing compared to uh, minor leagues, but I, I don't know. It just, I, I don't think I have it in my blood to coach, you know, it's I'm a just grind. Kinda, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a grind. It's, uh, it really is. So what yeah. uh, you said you teach, what do you teach? Uh, I'm a special ed teacher at a uh, high school here in Indianapolis. I'm in the uh, geography world history department this year. Uh, coach girls soccer as well. And, and that's a grind uh, uh, too, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. I don't, you know, with baseball, you play such long games and you don't know how long these games are going to go each night. At least with soccer, there's a time frame. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was actually a social studies teacher. That's what I, uh, that's how I started out. I transitioned into, uh, business at some point, um, on the marketing side, as far as start, starting my own business, but yeah, I was going to be that teacher coach and that's yeah. what I, I was going to do initially. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I have talked to, uh, the owner of the prospect league. I've talked to you know, folks at the great lakes league what can we do to get a team out in, in the Northern suburbs of Indianapolis? Because I think it's the same situation with Charlotte. If you could put a team out here, it's your team. It's yeah. local. It's cheaper. You yeah. don't have to drive downtown. You don't have to pay to park. You're not paying. You're right. It's like a beer is 12 bucks yeah. at a minor league game. I was at Charlotte a couple of years ago to see a game and it was five bucks to park. God, God bless him for having that. But I was like, man, 12 bucks, 10 bucks for it, it gets high. It gets very high. Now you can buy any kind of like their gift shop is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but even a hat, you know, 30 bucks, right. 35. Yeah, you, you're you're gonna you're gonna go through a fortune out of minor league baseball game. It's not right. like how it used to be. And I, I sort of miss those days. I love the cheap tickets. I loved the cheap food and and just sort of that down home feel to it that, that always attracted me. Yeah. And then, well, yeah. I was, I was speaking with Alec actually, and you know, it's interesting because, um, you know, I, I was, as I was researching um, summer collegiate leagues and, 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 and different leagues and, and really um, the valuations of various teams, you know, the teams in the Northwoods league are, <laughs> you know, and, and, and probably even the coastal they're they're worth over a million dollars. Now these summer college the coastal teams. League. Wow. I, I don't know for sure about the coastal because it's, it's, it's on the internet. Right. So is it true? But, um, mm -hmm. but the Northwoods, I think that's pretty accurate that those teams are you know valued over a million dollars. And, wow. um, and it just comes from, you know, to your point, there was a point when you could go to these minor league games and it was inexpensive, well, you also could, as a owner, come in and, and get some sort of ownership stake for, you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars. And now you're not touching anything for in the minors for unless you're putting down millions of dollars. And mm -hmm. it's just uh, 
it's just right now the there's no reason, right? There's no reason that the uh, commanders are going to sell for seven billion dollars. It's just you know people want to own a sports franchise. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know you look at uh you know you want to get at a, a small level the old North State League uh, might be a great option. I mean, I would love you know if I had the money to own a team or be partner or have some kind of say. I don't care what league it would be. It would it would it right. could be a small league, and I would promote the heck out of it and. And maybe yep. try to get away with a few more things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> than, than you could if you had a minor league team in AAA or AA where you had, you know, the parent company telling you what to do, you know. That's right. No, I think uh, you have a lot more uh, a lot more leeway where we are right now to try different things and, and, and see what sticks. Yeah. So uh, the Old North State League, I, I, I talked to Alec. Everything is based in North Carolina. They play at small ballparks. Uh, what attracted you to the team last year or maybe the league itself? I mean, did you have other options, other leagues you were looking into? Yeah. So last year I, I wasn't looking. Um, in fact, they they moved to Pineville and I didn't know they moved. And about about seven days before the season started and they had a late start. I think a, a GM backed out and a coach backed out shortly before the season. And, um, I saw a Facebook post just like, Hey, we're looking for interns and volunteers. And, and I, I played, I played ball and, and coached. And I thought, you know what? The field's a mile from my house. I probably could help out some. That's so right. I actually contacted the GM from last year, Katie and Katie is wonderful. And, um, she, uh, she welcomed me with open arms and I was able to introduce her to certain people in town. Um, and really, I'd go to home games when I could and volunteer and and just uh, help out where I could. And uh, that that just turned into um, an opportunity once a year the year was done. Katie was um, was gonna be a one year commitment for her. And the the league approached me about uh, being part of the Pineville team long term. And where and where it makes sense is I'm I live in Pineville. I've been here seven years. I have a lot of connections around town. And that's what the league was work was looking for. The league, when the league was founded, the league actually owned all the teams. And it's just been in the last year okay. where they started selling franchises because uh, they realized that you can't really understand each individual team or town, you know, based in one location. And for the league to really to grow, it needed local ownership. It needed people invested within the community. And uh, I was able to kind of plug that hole for them in the Pineville area. Nice. So yeah, that's definitely their goal to get uh local ownership. Do all the teams have local ownership? Has that been completed or? I don't, th I don't think yet. And I, I, you know, I'm not on the league level, so I don't know, know all that's going on, but I know there's been uh, a number of teams have transitioned. Um, and you know, there's 14 teams in the league and you know, I, I know the league still owns uh, a, a number, maybe a handful of teams, but I know they are looking and I know they're working with, I think a, a, a Connecticut company um, that does deals with uh, franchise sales to help facilitate. Yeah. That's not a bad little idea because I don't think I ever heard of the league until last year. I'm not quite sure how I found out about them, probably on Twitter. Yeah. And once I discovered the logos and the jerseys, you know, got the ball rolling and, and, uh, you know, here we are now. You're the second person from the league I've spoken with, so it's yeah. it's quite That's, nice. It's good. It's one, you know, one one step at a time. You know, I, I, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna compete with the coastal, you know, coastal plains league as far as talent and uh, quite yet. But you know, I think what we're seeing this year is when when players and the college guys are making their decisions. Um, we're we're in the mix. It's okay. you know we we just. Uh, we're signing a, a pitcher. Um, he's not signed yet, but he played in the uh, prospects league last year. So, yep. you know, we're, uh, we're in the conversation now where a year ago, especially two years ago, we just weren't. Um, okay. But, but I think, you know, if you, if you're watching on social where the teams are a lot more active this year, um, we're, we're kind of putting it out there and that's what you can do when you have the local ownership. So, uh, I no. think we're going to, we're going to really grow here over the next three to five years. Yeah. So where do you see the porcupines in five years? You know, you have ownership. 
Like, you know, what are some of your goals? Yeah, no, I, 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 I would like to see us drawing, you know, uh, 1500, 2000 a game. You know, I, I'm, we're going to be very aggressive in, in building the brand and, and, and really giving people a reason to come. Um, and no excuses, you know, we're going to, you know, we want to work with the city. I might be getting ahead of myself, but we want to work with the, the town of Pineville to you know, increase seating. Uh, but you know, we need to, we need to prove the model first. Yeah. So, but we expect to be here and we want to be here for a long time. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done a ton of research over the last year on the Cape Cod, right. And you can't compare any, any of the leagues of the Cape Cod league It's special. Yeah. It has the history, mm-hmm. but you can see the things they're doing and you can do similar things that work in your market. And, um, so, you know, we're all, we're all looking to, to be better, to improve. And, um, to do that, you look at models that work and, uh, that's, that's what we're going to do every year. We're going to get a little bit better. Yeah. And there's a lot out there that you can study from and hopefully people share their experiences and give you some ideas as well, because, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, North, the North, I, I did an article last year for stadium journey about North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some parts of that state where, I mean, there's a ball, there's like 10 ballparks within an hour. Yeah. The he's so spoiled out there. <laughs> We had a, we had a guy show up last year. He he came about three hours early and just guy by himself. And, and I, I just went up and introduced myself and, and he said, I'm from Florida and I'm just traveling uh, to different old North state league games every night for a week, different stadiums. Cause he had read about the history of these mill towns and the stadiums yeah. and he came from Florida to do it. And I was, I, honestly, I was blown away at that point. I'm like, people do that. No, and we do. What, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm finding out, which makes it really special. Yeah, we do. Uh, in 2019, I drove from Indianapolis. I went to uh, Greenville, Johnson City in Tennessee, Elizabethton. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I drove to Danville, Virginia to meet up with some friends. Uh, then I went down to Burlington, North Carolina, yep. Durham, mm-hmm. High Point, were these for minor league games or some? Yeah. Well, some were minor, some were some, yeah. some are collegiate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Danville and Burlington were summer collegiate. Great time, especially in Burlington. Yeah. That that is a blast if you can ever get up there. Canapolis one night, Charlotte. Oh, Canapolis just built a beautiful yeah. stadium. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I, was it the first year or the second year? Might have been the second year I was there. Cool. Uh, when they opened it up, and then Gastonia, their new ballpark. Yep. Yep. And then I drove down to Spartansburg, South Carolina. I had a, a buddy from New Jersey that was living down there, and we checked out the Spartan Burgers, which Spartan Burgers. Nice. I didn't know folded. <laughs> I that was they only played one year, and oh, okay. I tried to reach out to them last year for a podcast, and, and everything kept bouncing back. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And it, I looked it up. They folded. They ceased uh. operations. I guess they were going to come back this year, but. I don't know, but they play at old Duncan uh, Field, which has the uh, they have these 1909 uh, Shy Park seats from Philadelphia. Oh, cool! And it it was they're 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 doing construction there, so it was they had part of the stadium blocked off, but there was a, a good group of people there, and they had a, a giant ketchup bottle as a mascot, and I thought it was a great time. I mean, I, yeah. I had a blast that night, so. Yeah, I, I did a tour of just a bunch of ballparks I had never been to, just to you know add them to my list and yeah. make videos for my YouTube page, write them at them for the website. I I was familiar with the old North State League at the time, and I was in Reedsville. I spent the night there, and I they were I think the season was over by the time I was there, or, or they weren't playing. It was something or playoffs were going on, so that yeah, I didn't have a chance to see Reedsville, but. You know, it, it struck my curiosity. So it's, yeah. it's something that's on the radar. I do have a friend in Greensboro, not the Greensboro area. Yeah, Greensboro area. So okay. if I ever back, you know, ever back in the area, you know, Pine yeah. Hill will be on my list. Actually. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah you let yeah, me know. Yeah. That would be great to have you. Um, you know, one of the things our league, our league does, and, and you know, we, we call ourselves the Players League. And, and the reason is, um, you know, we're – we're between a 32 and 40 game schedule. There's 32 uh, league games and people, we, we can schedule additional games up to 40, but what that does, it gives the guys a little bit of time off in the summer because these guys are going from September on 
And, you know, some of the, like the Northwoods play 72 games. Yeah. It's quite a know, bit. That's a lot. So we try to, we try to be player friendly, uh, but still, you know, give the, give, you know, the comp from a competition standpoint, you know, give them something to play for and, you know, to win a championship. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. I'm just, uh, yeah. Looking over this. Yeah. We have a, uh, Northwoods league team up in Kokomo, Indiana, which is about 45 minutes North of me. Beautiful stadium. I mean, yeah. probably could be a nice low level, low a or high a stadium. And okay. yeah, it's, it, they pack a lot of games. I'm like, good Lord guys, you need, you need a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I get it. You know, kind of started off as, Hey, this is what pro baseball is like. We're going to, yeah. it's a grind and let's see if is it something you want to pursue. Yeah, um, but yeah. you know what? There's, it's a very small, small percentage of ball players that can take that next step. So, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Just, you know, give these guys a chance to play some summer ball, have some fun. That's right. And I assume most guys are local, correct? Or are you getting guys from all over the country? Yeah. You know, we're, we're it's a combination. Um, I think we're going to end up being two thirds local. Uh, we probably a third from out state where we're going to have host families for the guys. So we're working through that right now within the town to have host families. Um, but you know, we, do we, do we want some from, uh, from away, but yeah. Do we like the, guys? it's a little bit easier not having to find as many host families. They kind of have a built-in fan base and let's face it, uh, North Carolina baseball. There's, there's not, there's not many states that have better baseball than we do. No. So there's no. no reason we can't fill a, fill a roster with just Charlotte guys, really. Yeah. No, right. Now here's a question. How, how many months can you play baseball in North Carolina? Uh, absolutely twelve. Twelve. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's uh, when I when I first moved here, I was blown away watching. You know, baseball in November and December, and they're still outside in January. That'd be weird. That'd be yeah. weird for me. Yeah. Well, like today, you know, it's January 31st and uh, it was 65 degrees today. It was overcast, but 65. Yeah, it was 15 degrees. I took my dog out for a walk and he wanted to walk around the block. I said, Hey, he's, he's a little chihuahua. I said, Hey, dude, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's 15 degrees out, or actually, it's 19 degrees. I go, You sure you want to walk? He's like, He started freezing. So I had to pick him up. Absolutely. And yeah. I walk, I'm walking around with my chihuahua and I'm freezing. I'm like, yeah, thanks a lot. So yep. yeah, it's, it's cold here, but I, I think in a week from now, they say it's going to be about 45 degrees. So nice. Indiana yeah. is weird. Uh, you could go from extreme cold one day to early spring the next. So just, just wait, just wait the next day. It'll be fine. That's right. I mean, you, we can play baseball. Cause I think Saturday, was about 50 degrees. It wasn't that bad. Oh, I, mean, I, okay. it was, I didn't have it. I just had like a, a sweater on. It was quite nice. Oh, I could take. We could have played baseball. We definitely could have played. We Absolutely. Hey, yeah, I, when I grew up, I played baseball. It was, it was snowed in April. I, I, oh, we yeah. had scrimmages and snowed in April. So never, never forget that. Now, now you're from Duluth uh, area. I have a friend who lives up there. I've, I actually went to Duluth one year, saw a Huskies game. Okay. Beautiful town. It's one of those nice. sneaky, sneaky little towns. That I think more, more, some people don't realize, but it's quite nice. Quite you no, know, it, it's been a hidden gem for, yeah, for hidden years. Gem. Uh, probably ten years ago, it started to get some national attention um, because of some of the things that they did with walking trails and the lake. And uh, yeah, but right now, it's you know, it's it's, it's a place that's uh, people from the cities, from I when I say cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, yeah, Twin Cities, Iowa, uh, Chicago. You know, that's kind of a destination in the summer for vacations. Yeah. Now up there, did you have town ball up in in your neck of the woods? We did. That's okay. what I played. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have the college leagues. Um, yeah. We, but yeah, we had town ball. So that's, you know, we went to. I played town ball for three years actually uh, during college. And we went to state all three years and, nice. and, and there's, I think it's, it's crazy. It's like, there's 400 town ball teams in Minnesota. There, there's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's still, it's still really, it's, I mean, it's amazing actually what, and the ballparks in Southern Minnesota are beautiful. Um, and you got pro, ex professional guys playing in these, in these leagues and you get to the state tournament, you don't face anyone throwing under 90. I mean, it's, no. it's, no, it's really great ball. Yeah, no, when I went to, uh, I heard about town ball. Then when I went to the Twin Cities, uh, I went I went twice in about a three-year period. I checked out about three games apiece each time yeah. I was up there. And cool. uh, some of the best brats and hot dogs I've ever had were at a town ball 
car park. Oh yeah. Uh, they probably put right on the grill. Probably. Right. I mean, so, locally yeah. made, uh, yeah. what, what is it? Michelob golden draft. They have this certain beer up there that everybody drinks. That's probably that, one of them that I don't see down here. I'm like, why does okay. everybody like this beer? Uh, <laughs> I, I went to a town called Meesville that doesn't really even exist, but there's this awesome burger place across the street that everybody goes to nice. uh, before and after the game. Yeah. I had a blast and, I have another gentleman coming on uh, the show to talk about town ball uh, a few months from now. We oh, we, have, we have it scheduled later on this year. And he says, yeah, let me go out to some games. Let me tell you about it. I'll shoot some video for you and, and cool. we'll have a conversation. So that should be exciting. But yeah, town ball, folks, If for those of you who are listening who want to know about town ball, just contact me, look it up. You'll be driving to Minnesota pretty soon. Because... You know what's cool? So you have college guys, right? They're playing, uh, you know, D2, D1 ball. And there might be a guy in the team that's 42 years old. That's yep. a, you know, a, a old lefty that's still throwing 85. You know, it's 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 crazy. The, I the, saw, the, yeah. I think I saw like a 50-some-year-old man playing oh, in, I'm sure. um, in Jordan. Yeah. Long Jordan. hair, long, oh. long beard. He was, he had this hack. He He would hack at the ball. And he's been playing probably since his twenties and thirties. It's like this is so yeah, you can uh, still one, hit. one of the years we went to the state tournament, uh Jordan was one of the hosts. So I, I've played at Jordan and then oh, the mini map, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have the train coming by in the distance and that that's a fun yeah, it's a, I mean all the ballparks are they're they're little they're unique. They are everyone they're like they're not like some of them are a thousand, maybe five hundred. Uh, some of the towns just have a ballpark, nothing else. Yeah. Really cool grandstands, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good times. Good times. Yeah. I get a little bit jealous of Minnesota because right now the weather's terrible, but like during the summer, it's like you spend as much time as you can outside. That's right. It's go away soon. Yeah. You, got, you so. got baseball fields and lakes and you're good. Yeah. All right. So Eric, I appreciate you coming on today. Uh, let people know where they can find the porcupines if they want to order a hat. How much are tickets? Give me all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Pineville Porcupines.com. Um, on all the socials, you're gonna find us at Pineville at Pineville Porcupines. Um, as far as tickets, we're releasing tickets March 1st. Uh adults are 10 bucks and children are uh five, and then we'll have little discounts for season tickets and partial season ticket plans. But that's March 1st. Uh, all merch um, will be available in about three weeks. And, well, I say three weeks, but so call it uh, probably February 21st. Um, so we're, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, all these launches coming up in February. All right. Should be exciting time for the Porcupines, a new era of baseball yeah. in Pineville, North Carolina. Uh, we'll keep in touch. We'll, we'll be watching. We'll see how things go. And uh, feel free to... Let me know uh, how things are going there, too. Okay, Mark. I, I appreciate you having us on. Thank you so much. No problem. Best of luck. All right. Thank you, Eric, for coming on the Ballpark Hunter podcast. Looks like a lot of fun uh, going on in Pineville, North Kakalaka in 2023. That That is a beautiful ballpark. I mean, you know, there, I've seen some of these ballparks and it's like, okay. But this is, you know, this is ideal ideal for uh, the team. So if you happen to be in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, check out the Pineville Porcupines. They may just be playing a game and you may just want to take yourself there, spend the 10 bucks and enjoy baseball. So uh, that's it. That's it, folks. Thank you for coming on, watching, listening taking your time to listen to another great episode of the ballpark hunter podcast. So uh, give shout outs to all my fans out there. If you want to hear somebody else on here that you don't know, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, if you're interested in me interviewing somebody that you think would make a good guest, feel free to send me a message. Uh, I'm available on Twitter at ballpark hunter. You can also send me a message uh, via, you know, uh, YouTube. Just watch one of my videos and, and tell me, and uh, we'll try to make it happen. So until next time, stay safe. And next week's episode, Gem City Bison. Still don't know who's coming on, but it'll, it'll be about the bison. So have a good, have yourself a good night. We'll see you soon.
Bye-bye.